Now that we know how testing works, we can start learning how it applies to Vue specifically. This lesson continues from the previous one, Unit Testing Setup and Basics. If you want to follow along with the examples, you'll need a basic app with the Jest Unit Testing Package installed. A component needs to be mounted before it can be tested. Views Test Utilities provide us with the mount and shallow mount methods to do that. Both methods will return a wrapper object containing the view component and helper methods. But there are some important differences between them. The mount method will mount the component with any child components included. The shallow mount method on the other hand will replace child components with a stub. A stub is basically a fake object that acts as a stand-in for a real one. In most cases, we should try to use the mount method first. If there are any complications, we can try using shallow mount. Both methods are imported into our test script from the test utilities package, and they take the component we want to mount as an argument. As an example, we have a greeting message in our root app component that gets rendered to the page. We want to test if the correct words are rendered. In our test file, we'll import the mount method as well as the root app component. Then, we'll create a test suite with describe it syntax. For the test, we'll start by mounting the root app component and store it in a constant called wrapper. Once the component is mounted, we can use the helper functions in our assertions. One of those helpers is the text method, which returns the text content of an element. If we run the test, it will pass because the words are the same. Sometimes, we'll need to test if an element exists in a component's template before we can test it. To do that, the view test utilities gives us the find and exists methods. Because the find method is essentially a wrapper for JavaScript's query selector, we can use the same syntax. In the code example, we're using jests to be truthy matcher, but we can also use to be with true as the value. In our example, we display our greeting in a paragraph. So, in the test, we can find the p element. If we run the test, it passes because the paragraph exists. Now, let's say we only want to test the greeting message if the paragraph exists. For that, all we need to do is use our assertion as a condition in an if statement. And if we run the test, it passes again. The find method should only be used to find elements inside a component. To find the component itself, we should use the get component, find component, and find all components utility methods. Apart from finding a component, we can use the find component method to test if a component contains a child. The method takes the component we want to find as an argument. We have several options to find the child. We can pass the imported child directly to the method. Or, we can use an object with a name property to search for the child by its name. Or we can use JavaScript query select syntax. If the child component is found, it will return a wrapper for it. As an example, we've created a child component called greeting message.view with a simple greeting in its template. We've also created an instance of it in the root app component. In our test, we'll start by finding the greeting message child inside the root app component and store its wrapper in a constant called greet. Then, we'll use the new wrapper to find the paragraph element and test if the greeting message is hello world like we did earlier in the lesson. If we run the test, it'll pass because the component exists and contains the text, hello world. As a quick tip, 
we can use the getComponent method instead of findComponent. The only difference between the two is that getComponent will throw an error if the child can't be found. If we want to test computed properties, we have two options. We can use the mounted components wrapper to test the computed properties output in the template. Or, we can use the call method to call the computed property directly with local values. For the example, we've created a computed property in the root app component that combines first and last name properties. The template outputs the text, hello John Doe. For the test demonstration, we don't care about the hello part, we just want to know if the computed property is doing its job. So, instead of testing for an exact value with the to be matcher, we'll just check if the name John Doe exists somewhere in the text with the to contain matcher. If we run the test, it will pass because the name is present in the text. Like we mentioned, we can test a computed property without mounting the component. To do that, we access computed.propertyName on the imported component, then use the call method. We can't use the this keyword. It doesn't exist because the component isn't mounted. So, the computed property can't use the values we specified in the component. We'll need to define our own values in the test, then pass them to the call method. The computed property in our root app component uses the first name and last name data properties, so we'll define them here. The values that we define locally inside the test will be used instead of the data properties defined in the app component. When we run the test, it passes like we expect. Like with computed properties, we have two options when we want to test props. We can use local test values defined in the mounting options. Or, we can use the props method to test the props value directly. The mount and shallow mount methods can take a second argument, which is an object that contains the mounting options. We can use the mounting options to specify any props we want to test with values. To keep our example simple, we've created a greeting prop in our root app component that's rendered to the browser. Right now, the prop doesn't receive a value, and if we'd run the example in the browser, it won't display anything. But that's okay, because we can give our prop any value we want in the test by using the props mounting option. If we run the test, it will pass, because the value we gave the prop is the same as our assertion. We don't have to specify our own value, we can test for the exact value we pass to a prop. To do that, we use the props method on the child components wrapper. Because we're checking the props value directly, it doesn't have to be specified in the mounting options anymore. To demonstrate, we've defined a greeting prop in our greeting message component. In the root app component, we've created an instance of greeting message and passed a value to the greeting prop. In our test, we'll remove the mounting options. Then, we'll get the greeting message child component and use the props method in our assertion. If we run the example, the test will pass as we expect. A native DOM event is how the browser tells JavaScript that something interesting happened. For example, clicking on a button triggers a click event, or submitting a form triggers a submit event. View handles these events with the V on directive and its at shorthand. The view test utilities gives us the trigger method to manually trigger such an event and test its effect. The method is used on an element and takes the event we want to trigger as a string argument. For our example, we've created a simple click counter in the root app component. If we go over to the browser and click on the button, it increments the counter. In the test, we'll trigger that click event on the button and test that it increments from 0 to 1.
but if we run the test, it fails. So, the value didn't increment. Our first instinct would be to assume that the trigger method didn't work, or we made a typo. But something else is actually going on here. When we trigger an event, Vue doesn't automatically wait for the DOM to update. In our case, the click event was triggered, but Vue didn't wait for count to show 1. So all we need to do is to tell Vue to wait for the update by marking the trigger with a wait. And to use a wait of course, we need to mark the assertion method with async. A good way to know when to use a wait is when the statement needs to update the DOM. This time, when we run the test, it passes without any problems. A component event is how we communicate from a child component to a parent. We do so by passing data to the special emit instance variable. The view test utilities gives us the emitted method to help test these events. The method returns an object with two keys, the event name and the type of event it was. The event name's value is an array that contains another array of the emitted values. If an event is triggered multiple times, it will be tracked in the outer array. If an event passes multiple values, it will be tracked in the inner arrays. To access the value, we chain the event name to the emitted method and use the indexer two levels deep. For our example, we'll use the counter, but we'll emit a count event from the method with the count number as the value. In the test, we'll show the emitted return in a console log first to help the demonstration. If we run the test, it will output the console log for us. We're looking for the value 1, which is in the first value of the first inner array. So, our assertion would chain count 00 to the emitted method and test the output. Because the count will increment to 1 when the event fires, the test will pass. Now, let's trigger the event a second time and test that the count increased to 2. This time, we're looking for the first value in the second inner array. If we run the example, the test will pass. As a final demonstration, let's add a second value to the event in the root app component. This time, we're looking for the second value in both inner arrays. If we run the example, the test will pass. The arrays can be a little confusing sometimes. If you get stuck, just console log the emitted method like we did earlier. In the next video, we'll learn how to unit test Vuex state management. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.